Corporate Services and Long-Term Care, uh, Linda Evans, and they're going to be discussing the proposed 2023 municipal budget. And following a short presentation, there'll be approximately about a 10 minute question and answer period. Um, so we'll begin with Noah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here for us to announce the details of our 2023 budget proposal to City Council, which is being released uh, now. <clears throat> As Jody said, it will be a brief presentation. It will not take long, only a few slides. Joined by City Treasurer, General Manager, uh, Linda Evans. Several members of Finance and Administration are here, along with Councillor Hamilton and Councillor Trini. Good to see you both over the holidays. Um, this budget will be the most difficult budget ever faced by a city council in the history of the city of Thunder Bay. There are extraordinary external factors that have confounded us in progress in this budget, not limited to uh, emerging arguably from a pandemic that's lasted three years now, the war in Ukraine and worldwide inflation that we have not seen in generations. These are all impactful to the corporation of the city of Thunder Bay, like they are to everyone who lives in the city. The city of Thunder Bay faces the same challenges, arguably, well, different, but challenged nonetheless. Uh, normally, three out of every four years, administration receives direction from city council as to budget parameters. For example, come in at 2.5% or less, and those are our direction and we go away and we prepare a budget proposal. This year, because it's an election year, no direction was given by City Council. That is City Council's policy, happens once every four years. I did give direction though, because I am charged by City Council to develop a budget for their consideration, and the direction I gave this year was a 0% increase to all operations and departments with some exceptions. Those exceptions include program and service review initiatives already approved by council, wages and benefits, and inflationary increases related to facilities and fleet. Think about fuel, okay? EMT, uh, under the uh, chair, Linda Evans, develops the budget proposal. And over the months, probably about five months, EMT focused on reviewing areas for efficiencies and cost savings. We reviewed revenues, rates and fees with consideration to offset inflation and cost increases. That was my direction and that was what EMT did to arrive at the budget proposal we have today. A comment on COVID. COVID of course still exists. It's still about us and around us. We're hearing news this morning of an emerging Omicron variant in British Columbia. Where that goes, who knows? Um, but we've reached a new normal when it comes to COVID and budgeting, and we have considered the impacts of COVID as a sort of normal process in the budget. And finally, I do want to highlight the impact of inflation. This is a huge challenge for us. The average increase for January to October in 2022 for Ontario was 6.9%. There is a peak of 7.9%, and I recall numbers for Thunder Bay above 8%. I think it's pretty clear. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm no economist, but inflation is probably going to take a few years before it gets back down to 2%. But we will be dealing with high inflation for the next year or two at the very least. All right. So the budget increase. There is an increase to the budget this year. And that increase is 5.58%. So that is the increase to the size of the budget. It's a proposal that we give to council. That is not what the average property owner will see as an increase to their taxes. That, these are not the same things. This is the size of the budget increase that we are proposing to council. That does not equate to what a property owner will pay. Decisions need to be made over the next six months before that final determination is made as to what a property owner will pay for an increase. And that will vary based on the classes of property and based on decisions that council makes. Uh, this was an extraordinarily difficult budget process. 
I thank the members of the executive team and all members of management who contributed to this budget process, and I recognize the hard work. With that, I'd like to turn it over to the treasurer. Oh, this is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Norm. So the 2023 municipal tax levy of $220.8 million represents an increase of $12.8 million over 2022. So the levy amount is the amount that we need to raise from property tax uh, uh, payers to fund city services and contribute to capital infrastructure programs. As shown in the chart at the top, the increase, excluding the police and police services board, is 8.4 million, or 4.06%. The police and police services board increases at 4.4 million, or just over a third of the total 6.18 levy increase. After growth of 1.2 million, the 2023 proposed levy increase is as noted uh, by City Manager Gale at 5.58%. Also mentioned by City Manager Gale, the budget review process was exceptionally difficult this year. Following budget meetings with all city departments and reps from outside boards, reductions and increased revenues were identified. To further reduce the proposed levy, direction was given to decrease the tax-supported capital budget by 10%, getting us to that 5.58 after growth. And this was accomplished without any significant service reductions. So some of the major drivers in the 2023 operating budget include, as mentioned, the Thunder Bay Police Service, which came in at an increase of 4.1 million, and the Police Services Board uh, at 300,000. Inflation, of course, huge impact, uh, and a big driver specifically in our facilities and fleet uh, division. Parts and contracted repairs and maintenance saw significant increases and this was also identified in our 2022 variance reports. Uh, they are, this has been a, a lingering impact uh, throughout 2022 um, so it, it is anticipated to continue. Uh, we are also seeing specific inflationary pressures in our road section uh, when it comes to things like um, salt ro uh, on the roads as well as paint. Um, there's been exorbitant increases in those costs. And finally, uh, another example is our, our long-term care and senior services area where we're seeing, as we all are, uh, increases in our food. So altogether, the impact uh, of inflation in the budget is about $1.6 million. Other budget drivers include the continued implementation of the program and service review initiatives that um, we want to uh, and, and have been, um, um, uh, it's been recommended and approved by council to move forward, including the digital strategy, our, uh, our HR strategy, and our project management office recycling programs and these these items have an impact of about 1.3 million insurance premiums continue to rise and in the 2023 budget we have another impact of about 600,000 so these increases were offset by additional Ontario municipal partnership funding uh, which uh, we certainly appreciated uh, $500,000 and as noted, we did decrease the capital financed uh, by the tax levy, by, uh, which had an impact of 800000 I do want to point out that given the volatility of fuel prices, as a financial strategy in 2023, a portion of the projected 2023 increase in fuel and diesel, which we've all seen, there's been significant volatility at the pumps uh, as we each go and fill up our cars uh, or vehicles, um, because of this volatility, we have recommended that uh, the increase, or a portion of the increase, be covered through the Stabilization Reserve Fund in 2023 to minimize the impact on the tax levy. This is not something that we did lightly, uh, we, uh, but we feel it is, it is something that we had to do this year, given the fact that the fluctuation in the prices has just been so significant. So I'll turn it back over to City Manager Gallup. I want to speak a little bit about the proposed capital budget. So we mentioned already that there's a 10% reduction proposed. 
contrary, uh, seemingly, to many discussions and comments made by administration where we recommend an increase in investment in infrastructure. We stand by this because it's an extraordinary year. This year and next year will be outliers with, with our projections and projections by economists about where the economy is going and where the economy is now. Council has directed and decided that there will be a 5% increase in infrastructure spending each year. And when we started the budget process, we did that. We included the 5% increase. We also had a target to drive the overall budget impact down. And eventually we came to the point where while we reduce the 10%, or reduce capital me by 10%, we can get our overall budget increase underneath 6%, below 6%. That is the rationale. If council wishes to return to their, to their intent to have 5% increase every year, they can. They simply need to add the 10% back in, and that can be done. If that happens, the budget increase goes from 5.58% to 6.28%. And the real numbers are uh, from $16.9 million to $18.3 million. That is a decision that can be made by council that can be readily implemented by administration, should council choose. Now, the infrastructure that we have in this proposed budget is the vast majority is on renewal and life cycle maintenance, spending on the things that we have now, or replacing the things that we have now that are necessary things. However, there is new infrastructure, and I wish to highlight a couple of things that are in our proposed budget. The first is the reconstruction of Red River Road and the downtown North Core. That's it. The new pedestrian crossovers at locations across the city. Um, new parks and open spaces infrastructure, so playgrounds, including and also including Prince Arthur's Landing Festival area, the conservatory display area and parking lot, Vickers Park Playground, trail reconstruction, and continued emerald ash borer response are all in. Okay. Uh, also improvements to the Canada Games Complex and the Fort William Gardens. We also have a replacement of software for tax management, which is an important efficiency that we need to have in there. And the Victoriaville Demolition Phase 1 is in. some municipal comparators, a survey was carried out with members of the Ontario Regional and Single Tiered uh, Treasurer's Committee, and based on various stages of the budget process of these, of these municipalities, the projected or proposed municipal tax uh, levy increases after growth for the 11 Ontario municipal municipalities that, that responded ranged from 2.9% to 9.3% with an average of 6.24. So the city of Thunder Bay is, uh, is, is as noted, uh, at 5.58. The 2023 proposed budget includes an increase of 50.9 FTEs. This represents a 2.4% increase to the corporation's FTE complement. 20.3 positions, or 40%, will be fully or partially funded by other levels of government, including healthcare staff at Pioneer Ridge and rural primary care paramedics at Superior North EMS. Of the 50.9 positions, 20.8 relate to police services, and 2.4 are being requested by the Community Economic Development Corporation. The 7.3 Four FTEs in city departments include four positions for council approved program and service re review initiatives, including an HR recruitment officer, a project manager in strategic initiatives and engagement, and corporate information technology project and business analysts. We kept these in, we need to move these forward, and these will lead to long term efficiencies and better customer service to 
the general public as well as to the internal operations of the corporation. Two positions are also uh, related to the provincially mandated recycling project programs. So this, uh, some important dates are noted on this final slide. The budget online survey uh, will be available today uh, through February the 2nd. January 12th, uh, we encourage the public uh, to participate in the pre-budget deputation opportunities. Council's formal review will commence on January 17th and continue on the 19th, 25th, and 31st. The public post-budget deputations on February 2nd and budget ratification or approval on February 6th. Of course, we always encourage everyone to be, to get involved. Thank you. So as we wrap up our presentation portion of uh, today's media conference, I would just like to remind everyone out there that um, we do have the opportunity for residents to get involved with the city budget. As right mentioned, we have an online survey that runs through the city's website until February 2nd. <coughs> There's also a hard copy handbook for budget feedback, which is available through City Hall or the Brody and Regal branches of the Thunder Bay Public Library. All of this feedback that is gathered throughout the course of the coming weeks will be shared on a weekly basis directly with City Council for their consideration during their deliberation process. This is in addition to the public engagement on the city budget that we conducted over the summer months. That information is also shared with City Council and a summary report of the earlier engagement is available on the city website on January 17th. So I do encourage citizens to get involved. As mentioned, there's two deputation opportunities as well on the 12th and the 2nd. Um, we'll now turn it over to the media to invite questions of the city manager and city treasurer will go for about 10 minutes so I encourage you to uh, step forward and we'll take your questions Feeling set up? Ready to go? Mm -hmm. So, do we have any questions? Um, maybe I'll just start by asking: Is this the highest tax levy increase in the city's history? Uh, certainly, in my experience. So, it's, it, let, let's be clear: it's a proposal; it's not the final number yet. But certainly, in my experience in preparing budgets for the city of Thunder Bay, I have never seen anything like this. Okay. Neither of you is aware of a higher increase in the city's history proposed. I guess not offhand. Yeah. I'm not aware. How difficult was this process? Uh, you, you know, it, it's been as difficult for us as, as, as it has been for anyone out there who's a homeowner, who has a family, who runs a business, dealing with the same pressures that we're dealing with. I recognize small businesses and other businesses and, and families go to supermarkets and they're spending a lot more money or buying less food. Driving less because of the cost of fuel. Uh, I recognize these pressures across our community and it's the same thing for the corporation of the city of Thunder Bay. We are no different in that regard and that's why you see the numbers we have here. What do you hear, what do you, what do you expect kind of going forward? Not to presuppose what council's going to do, but do you expect these, these meetings to be longer and more difficult than they have been in the past? What are you hearing? Yeah, so I, Feel free, but I, I don't want to, in, and you, you said in your question, Chris, I don't want to presuppose what council will do or what the last year will go. I know that's not what you're asking, but I, it's important for me to say that. Um, but I think they will be difficult. I said before, uh, last year, one of the last council meetings, that this budget process will be grueling. Those are the words I use. I don't think anyone is comfortable with the budget increase that we have right now. We all must recognize the reasons for it. Those reasons are real. So I think it's going to be a difficult process. 
I agree. Uh, you know, we, we did, this was very difficult. We, we attempted um, at all costs to not have any significant service reductions. We, you know, when I think about, um, you know, we talk about the impact of inflation to, to everybody. Um, we, we tried very hard and we managed to keep things like um, programs like the Meals on Wheels, for example, no increase to the cost. Um, programs um, that, that benefit that, you know, people that are, are struggling. We, we, we really focused on those types of programs to maintain them. Can you touch on in the, in the context where you're aiming to not decrease service everywhere else, why we're seeing an increase in the number of police officers and the funding for the police board? Yeah, so we, we really worked hard to maintain service levels and concurrently have a modest and below inflation increase to user fees across the board. When it comes to the police service, any questions about the police service are best addressed to the police services board and the police chief. So safe to say then what's in the proposed budget is coming directly from those organizations and wasn't touched by city administration? The police <coughs> services board and the police chief make a budget proposal to city council. We do not have a role in it. Um, if council did want to reduce this levy um, from what's proposed, what, what approaches do you think are available uh, to them? Uh, do you want to? Mm. I'll talk about operations. Uh, to reduce, um, certainly um, there are, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I really, you know, there, there's, uh, the only opportunities would be to start cutting uh, some services that we offer. Um, we, as I mentioned, um, we did look to the Stabilization Reserve Fund to, to fund that extraordinary, exceptional expenses that we feel are only going to be within uh, this year. We do not recommend going to reserve funds for expenses that will exceed a, a one-year period. It's just not uh, prudent uh, from a financial perspective. This, this is not easy. <clears throat> there are no magic bullets that will drive that budget number down that won't be impactful or difficult to do. There's no tinkering in this budget that's going to realize a budget increase of 2%, I'm just making that number up, and maintain service levels and infrastructure spending at the same time. It's just not going to happen. And any cuts to operations, which can be done, and I'm sure there will be discussions about that, will not realize immediate savings. It will take time to implement, and there are costs to reducing operations. There are decommissioning costs, for example, separation costs, that will impact whatever savings are made in the short term. So those are long-term prospects and conversations that council need to have that are gonna be quite difficult. And just to highlight once again, this budget proposal does not include cuts to operations. We are maintaining service levels. Uh, just, just uh, what kind of guidance are you going to provide to uh, council if, if they do want to get this down? Yeah, so I, I don't provide guidance to council, but I will provide advice. And the advice would be, as I just said, uh, Reducing operations, I think that was your question? Or I don't want to, yeah, okay, reducing operations, that's not a panacea. That's not something that you can, you know, and I'll be glib, just pull out a knife, slice, 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 and then realize immediate savings. It doesn't work that way. First, council must decide what service levels and what services they want to reduce. And then we will look at what the decommissioning costs and the timing of that are. And when you combine the conversation and the level of consultation and discussions that need to be had, and you add in the amount of time it would take to do anything, and then you add in again the lack of flexibility that we have in the operating budget because much of it simply can't be touched for a whole bunch of reasons, legal and otherwise, uh, room and space is quite limited. This is a difficult proposition. Mentioned council, I guess. I'm wondering, like, like, two members of council are here. Where's the mayor? Just, is the mayor not? I don't know what the mayor is. So, was he invited at all? Or? I don't know. Okay. Right. 
um, recycling organics programs, which are uh, provincially mandated, obviously, are, is there any hope that some of the cost of those programs will actually be offset through, you know, diverting garbage, et cetera? Um, at this point, the budget is not reflecting an offset. Uh, again, we this is this is these are programs that will be fully implemented in 2024 and 2025. Uh, we, have, we have lots to learn and uh, certainly that is that would be the, the end goal to have uh, the offset. I, I can't identify that at this point. Um, oh, sorry. Go, no, go ahead. This might be in the documents, but I'm wondering if Linda could just for the record give us, do you know what the increase for the median residential taxpayer would be under this budget? So I can't advise that at this point. And why is because we need council to make decisions on the tax policy and what property classes will what portion of the tax levy uh, various property classes will be responsible for. So those decisions and then the nail down amount will be available in April. Certainly we'll be able to give um, at the end of the budget when it's ratified, we'll, we can give an estimate, but at this point it's, it's much too early. And I'd like to say for I think the fifth time, just to make me feel good, <laughs> that 5.56 is not translatable into what a property owner will pay you next year. It's not the same thing. Now, it's close, but it's not, that's not the number. It's, that is, 5.56 reflects the increase to the budget. And you don't have an estimate for what it would translate to, like under the current tax policy that council has approved, um, I guess, last year, or this year? I'm very hesitant to, to, to advise of that number at this point. Um, if, uh, if nobody else has anything else, I do just have a last one about um, assessment growth. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 10 times what it was last year. I could be off on that, but can you point to any um, factors in that um, and just speak to, you know, how, how much that will help, uh, I guess, defray the, the increase? Sure. So we, we saw the growth at 1.2 million this year, which, which was double, I believe, of uh, last year, if not more. Um, so it really, uh, we, we saw about half of that from residential, and um, in the last few years there's been very little commercial. So we did see about 500,000 growth from the commercial side of things. Nothing really specific, uh, just a number of smaller um, assessment uh, increases. Last call for any questions? Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. It gets me further.